Hi, my name is JJ Rikaza. I've been shooting for about 22 years in competition. About 10 years of that, I got into the government world, started applying some of the things that I've learned into the real world. One of the most common questions that I get is how do you increase your speed without losing your accuracy? So today we're gonna to talk about a little bit about high-speed marksmanship in terms of how I apply it into the trigger control. Trigger is one of the most basic fundamentals there is. It's not the most advanced thing, but the smallest movement there can affect your shooting, whether it's um, consistency in terms of at distance. At seven yards and in, it doesn't really matter. You can slap your trigger and get away with it. But 15, 10, 20, 15 yards, that's when it starts to keep you honest. And I use a paper target because it's still a silhouette. It just really, it kind of tricks you to being, to making you think you're better than you are because you're hitting it anywhere. Paper target actually keeps you honest. You have a scoring tar target. It doesn't matter whether, whatever, IPSC target or a QYT target. It keeps you honest because you have a scoring target. So here today, what I'm gonna show you is a little bit of what I do in terms of the trigger reset and where I lose or gain speed. I'll show you guys what shooter being ready versus gun being ready. And then I'll talk about that in terms of how that relates to my trigger. So for example, Gun's empty. I have a race gun here, but everything's about the same. The principles remain the same. The techniques apply differently in different platforms. So, shooting, shooter being ready, what does that mean? Shooter being ready meaning, uh, actually the gun being ready, what does that mean? Gun being ready is basically the gun locked in place, ready to fire, triggers reset, and pretty much ready to go. It can go bang anytime. Shooter being ready is basically me seeing my sights on target and the trigger being prepped. So a lot of, there's a lot of techniques out there saying pin and trigger to the rear. Pinning the trigger to the rear of the pistol doesn't really work because you're working off of recoil. And that actually develops and builds anxiety into your shooting. So when I say pinning the trigger to the rear, most people will say boom and hold it to the rear. You don't want to hold it to the rear. The reason being is because at this point, the gun is racked back and locked back into position. Technically, it's ready to fire, although you're actually holding the gun back because you're pinning the trigger to the rear. So is that efficient? No, it's inefficient because you're holding the trigger back. So instead of me pinning the trigger to the rear, why don't I just fire as soon as the gun goes in recoil, I reset and the minute it goes in battery, gun being ready, I'm ready also and making myself ready by prepping the trigger as soon as it is. So all now my job is to find and line up and confirm my sights on, my shot, uh, sights on target. And once I have my sights on target, squeeze and break, and then repeat. I do it over and over and to the point where my goal is and your goal should be to push that threshold because it's not going to be easy to do this at first time. Your goal is to be able to fire the gun, reset and prep before the gun gets ready. And I don't want, and if any one of your friends are watching you, I don't want to see this. And I shouldn't hear the audible sear click. As you can see, I won't be able to, you shouldn't be hearing any audible sear click versus a guy Every time I hear an audible sear click, that to me tells me that the guy's having an inefficient movement to his trigger and whether he's gonna be struggling or he's gonna start to struggle once we have distance on target. All right, so what I'm gonna show you guys here is I'm gonna demo it slowly, the inefficient way of shooting, the pin and reset um, technique. All right, so what you're gonna see is what are the things I want you to uh, pay attention to. The way my trigger is, where my trigger is when my gun gets back on target. Also, pay attention to the audible sear click because it'll be pretty loud. All right, here we go. All right, so you heard the audible sear click there pretty good, right? And you saw where I was pinning the trigger to here and my gun was actually ready to fire. Now I'm gonna do the same exact thing um, in terms of accuracy and results, but I'm gonna do it a lot more efficiently. I'm gonna spend a lot less time in movement. I'm gonna spend and use that dead time when the gun isn't ready to reset and prep and make myself ready. So you can see the difference here. You won't hear, you shouldn't hear or see my trigger finger moving. By the time my gun's ready, I should be ready to go. All right, so here we go. So what you got to see there is that you didn't hear the audible sear click and what you, you saw there was maybe the rate of fire was the byproduct of me being efficient. But if you look at the target, 
the, 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 the results were very similar. It was still a pretty tight group. They were probably within an inch apart. If not, they were probably touching. All right, so yeah, try this out in the range. Don't, be, don't fall in that safe haven of trapping the trigger in the back. Just think that your trigger may be, let's say, six pounds. Don't force seven pounds into that frame because that's going to affect the muzzle. Only use enough force and pressure to release and drop that hammer to then reset and prep and get out of that hole as best as you can to be efficient and be able to start increasing your speed at distance. Remember, at five and seven yards, you can slap your trigger all day and you can get away with it. 15, 25, 30 yards and you have a scoring target, things start to matter a little bit. Try it out, guys. Yeah.